are not alone on your journey. Listen in to the Unshakable Living Show, Supernaturally and Divinely Unshakable with Lisa Belts, twice a month for your well-deserved dose of positive energy and your personal reminder that you are perfectly imperfect, and that's okay. Find your true calling and influence the world around you for the better with your profound gifts. Walk away feeling truly unshakable. Remember, God can't steer a parked car, so step on the gas now with Lisa and let him do the rest. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for tuning in, whether you're tuning in live tonight or you're listening to the replay. Um, I did want to remind all of our listeners that all of the archived episodes are available on the Transformation Talk Radio Facebook page, their website. And if you have a podcast app such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or the other podcast apps, all of the prior episodes should be out there and be available too. I have a goal of getting to 100 five star likes on each of the different platforms. So if you do listen to the show, I would love it if you would go out and just high five me with those five stars. Algorithmically, once you hit 100, you kind of bump up in the ratings. So that is one of my short term and maybe longer term goals is to hit 100. So today is a little bit different. Um, today is my first Ask Me Anything episode. And for those of you that may or may not be familiar with that terminology, it's an opportunity for you, my listeners, to email me or message me on Facebook with a question that you have, and I will address it on air. In some formats, and maybe in the future, we'll actually do it live where you can um, uh, message into the Transformation Talk Radio while I'm live on the air. But for this time, I actually had people present me with a couple of questions. And so that's what we're going to go through today. Uh, if there's a little bit of time at the end, I do have a topic of self-belief that we're going to dive into a little bit as well. So the first question today, and I will say none of these questions are trivial or very simple. And so the first question today is, how can I be unshakable and forgive my ex when he continues to let our children down, hurting their feelings over and over? Gulp. It's a hard one. First of all, that is a hard situation. And I know so many families where this scenario plays out. And, and for my circle of friends, typically it's the mom has the kids, dad is either working too many hours or is involved in his life. For whatever reason, he is not the active participating dad that you would like him to be. And so the first thing I want you to do is just acknowledge the fact that truly it, it's a hard thing. It's hard on you as the mom and it's hard on your kids. Secondly, also important, I want you to remember that you're not a victim. Okay, you are a victor. You are in the driver's seat of your life. And you also have the opportunity to teach your children that they are in the driver's seat and that they are not victims. When we allow ourselves to go into that victim mentality and victim mode, it's easy to get into self-pity and it's easy to get more and more angry over time. And that really is not good for you and it's not good for the situation. A question that you can use to shift your energy and shift your thought process is to ask, what is this situation trying to teach me? And, and I know that there's some people are going to go, yeah, the obvious thing is, is I shouldn't have married the guy in the first place. Yeah, but but you did and you did for a reason. And so there is always an opportunity here for you to see life from a little bit different perspective to make sure that you are in that driver's seat. So what is the situation trying to teach you? The next point I felt led to share is to remind you that forgiveness is a choice. Forgiveness is not necessarily an emotion, only an emotion or a feeling. You have a free will and it is within your free will to choose to forgive him. 
And forgiveness is a gift that you give yourself. Because when we hold a grudge, when we hold resentment, when we hold that anger, we repress it and it actually goes into our physical bodies. And over time, that stored, tamped down, repressed anger will make you physically ill. It can take different forms, but just know that you don't want that negative energy trapped in your body. Love yourself enough to forgive. And you're not doing it for the other person. And, and these forgiveness principles really apply to any situation, not just an ex. But forgiveness really is a gift that you give yourself. Forgiving also does not imply that you're going to forget. And it doesn't mean that you don't hold the other person accountable. Forgiveness is not a weak emotion. It is not going, oh, it's okay. It's okay. No, that is not forgiveness. Forgiveness is releasing that anger and that emotion and letting the other person be themselves, but you be yourself. And so that leads right into the next point, which is setting boundaries. It's important for you to set boundaries both physically and it may be that you don't allow that person through your front door. It's like, we'll meet at the front door or we'll meet someplace else. Set a physical boundary. And you also have the right, and it's really good for you to do so, to set mental and emotional boundaries. And just say, you know, this is as much of my brain space as I'm going to allow you to have. And it does take time. It is not always an overnight thing to make that transition to saying, nope, you only get this much space in my brain. So as you establish those boundaries, I know a lot of us did not grow up with really good boundaries. If you need a reference, there is a book title called Boundaries, and it's by Cloud and Townsend. And there's a book and workbook and devotionals and different things. So there's a lot of really good resources out there available to you to help you understand what a boundary is. What does a healthy boundary look like? And establish steps. And it may be that you start small. A again, it's not like you have to go from zero to 60 in two days. Start small and grow into it. Another thing is to recognize that through this situation, you are likely going to go through the five stages of grief. And those five stages of grief are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and ultimately acceptance. And so as your husband or ex-husband or ex-wife continues to not live up to your expectations or not show up for their children, you will likely go through these stages of grief and you may go through them more than once, but typically it will be lesser and lesser and lesser over time. The last thing on this one is to watch for codependent behavior. And if codependency is a challenge for you, there's a book called Codependent No More. And the author is Melody Beattie, B-E-A-T-T-I-E. So again, I know this is a challenging topic, but forgiveness really is a biblical principle. It is a life principle. It is a self-care and a self-health principle. And so if you're in that situation, whether it's an ex or someone else in your life where you're struggling with forgiveness, if you can flip that around and go, I choose to forgive them for me. It puts you in that power position and it puts you to where you are in the driver's seat. So I hope that that was helpful for you. Switching gears completely. The next question that came up is, how can I remain unshakable when totally unexpected financial situations hit? One case that came up recently was somebody found out that they owe a lot more taxes than they were expecting to. I have another friend whose car broke down. Another person had the water line in their home spring a leak. Another person had appliances die. So first, I want you to remember this financial situation does not define you. It is a circumstance. It is not a life sentence. 
Secondly, step back and breathe and gain a little perspective. Again, I expect you may go through some of the stages of grief with this anger and whether that's anger with yourself for something that you should have done or shouldn't have done or just anger at the situation. Again, don't move into victim mode. Stay in the driver's seat of your life, but step back and take a few deep breaths. Remind yourself you've made it this far. You have faced other difficult situations before and you're still standing. Doesn't mean it wasn't hard, doesn't mean this may not be hard or challenging, but again, there's a lesson here. What can God be for you in this situation that he could not be in any other time? The Bible talks about and describes God as Jehovah Jireh, our provider. If you are a person of faith, this is an opportunity for you to step out in faith and grow in looking to God as your source and your provision. If you are of another faith and you talk about universe or where your source is, again, it's an opportunity for you to step out in faith and go, you know what? I didn't expect this bill, but life and God can just as easily bring me the provision to, to pay for the bill. And so you have to remain open and ready to receive. If you shut down and go into scarcity mode and go into desperation and panic, that's going to draw the wrong abundance to you. That's going to move you into scarcity mode and not into abundance. Stay open, stay breathing, allow your perspective to broaden. And it's a little challenging, but if you can set the situation aside walk away from it. I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, you've got a paper or you got something in the mail or whatever it is, set it down, put it in a drawer and walk away from it for whatever period of time you need to do in order to breathe and gain some perspective. And I want to say just quickly, overwhelm happens when you feel like you have to solve everything at once. And in most of these situations, and we've had some pretty major financial situations, it does not have to all be solved in one sitting. Allow it to sit and percolate a little bit, move into asking questions that get your brain into problem solving mode. And I know we need to go to a break, so we're going to stop and pause right there. And I've got just a couple more thoughts to share on finances when we get back. And then the next question we're going to solve or jump into at least is why is it so hard to find my purpose? So don't go away. Come right back. Take control over your future. I'm Lisa Belts, and I'm here to help you realize your true potential and become unshakable. Schedule a completely free introductory coaching session with me now to see for yourself how I work. Get the divine guidance that you need to transform your life for the better. Go to lisabelts.com and take that step towards transformation. That's L-Y-S-A-B-E-L-T-Z. You are made for more. I'm Coach Lisa, and I'm here to help you achieve ultimate life satisfaction. Your life matters to the world. Reimagine your future with an individualized life by design approach with my free ebook, The Five C's of Coaching Commitment, Clarity, Coachable, Creative, and Change. Find the transformation you're looking for. Go to lisabelts.com. That's L Y S A B E L T Z. There is divinity within you. Join Lisa Belts on her show, The Unshakable Living Show, supernaturally and divinely unshakable, twice a month, and find that divinity that you deserve. Lisa will help you feel encouraged, empowered, and realize that you're not alone on your journey. With Lisa, address the foundation, the frame, and the finish of your dreams and become truly
And welcome back. We're back on air. And so we've been talking about how do you remain unshakable when you experience an unexpected financial situation? And we talked through several points. And the last thing I want to challenge you to do is to shift your brain into problem solving mode by beginning to ask some questions. And this is not questions like, why in the hell did this happen to me? That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is, is asking questions like, how can I break this down into smaller pieces? Asking yourself, reminding yourself, haven't I always been provided for in the past? Why will this situation be any different? What can I learn from this right now? And you may learn that you need to bump up your tax withdrawals, or you may learn that you need to put away quarterly deposits. There's several different things you can learn. You can also learn the, the bigger life lesson that when there's a need, the provision appears. Until this need, this exact specific need existed, this exact provision and solution did not exist because the situation arose, the solution is also gonna arise. So that was also a very interesting question that came up. And so thank you for my user or my users, my listeners that submitted that question. And so the last question that we're gonna to tackle today is, why is it so hard to find my purpose? And so we, at least, I oftentimes overthink our purpose. We're looking for one magical thing that is going to make all of life make sense. That's why we get and stay stuck and looking for the perfect purpose, that magic key that will unlock the door to answer all of life's hardest questions. And I will say, and it's in my notes, my husband is laughing out loud right now and shaking his head. It's like, I've been trying to tell her that for 35 years. So yes, honey, I'm getting it. Your purpose is not some elusive thing that is way out in front of you, waiting for you to discover it. Believe it or not, whether you're aware of it or not, you are living your purpose right now, today, wherever you are in life and all of the things that have led you to where you are today are all part of your purpose. And so somebody's going to ask me, but what if I have totally missed God's plan for my life? Yes, we have free will and we will never get it all right. And that's where we talk about being perfectly imperfect. We are all perfectly imperfect, and God knows that. So good news, he already accounted for it. Even when we go what I call four-wheeling in life, God has a remedy, and he will continuously nudge and guide us back towards the center of the lane. And some, sometimes, somehow, somewhere along the line, I had picked up this idea that my path in life, my purpose in life was this little goat trail up through the Andes Mountains. And it was about this wide. And there's, you know, a 600 foot drop off on one side and this major mountain on the other side. You know, it really isn't that hard. I've adjusted my thinking to think of my purpose and my path in life as a five lane freeway going one direction. It gives me room to move back and forth, but still know that I'm going in the right direction at the right speed. And yes, I have occasionally taken an off ramp and gotten out into the wilderness, but I always find my way back and you have to, and you will continue to do that. Another thought to consider around purpose is that over the course of your life, you will have more than one purpose. God talks about and moves through seasons of life, just like we've got theoretically four seasons in the year, our life also moves in seasons. And sometimes our seasons correlate to our chronological age, but not always, you know, I didn't have my daughter until I was in my early 30s. Some people have their children when in their, their late teens or early 20s. 
So our periods or seasons of life may be at different chronological ages, but for anyone who is a parent, you had that stage where your children were toddlers and then grade schoolers, junior high, high school, college, and then they're out adults on their own. So those are part of the seasons. There's that season of raising children and there's seasons of other things. And so I believe and I, I describe and tell everybody that we are created and designed with a divine plan. There is a divine blueprint written for each and every one of us. And we all have what we call our book of days. And before God created the earth, before the earth was came into being, God wrote down all of our days in his book of life for us. And I believe that in that book of life or book of days is what we call our gifts, talents, and abilities. It's the inherent and intrinsic things that God designed and put into us. And these are the gifts that bring God glory when we're moving in them and using them. But it's also a direction or, or indicators of where our purpose and our path is in life. When we are using our gifts, our talents, and our abilities, that's when things tend to be easier. Now, I, and the example that I would give is when I wrote my book, Becoming Unshakable. That book was, you know, 10 or 12 years in the writing. I started writing it. God said, you got to go live some more of it before you can finish it. A few years later, moved into my personal growth season or stage. And then God said it was time to finish it. I had to become the right person before I could finish the book. And I will say it was still a lot of hard work. Even though I am a writer, I am called to write. It is part of my purpose is to write. It was still hard work. The next piece is to look at what problems you're drawn to. All of us tend to have a passion towards something. My friend Gail volunteers and works at Chrysalis here in Boise, which works with women coming out of addiction. It is her passion. It is where she is drawn to use her gifts, talents, and abilities. Some people may care a lot about the kids that go hungry at their children's school. That's a world problem that is in your path and you have a passion for it. And if you have the gifts, talents, and abilities to also solve that, that's probably your wheelhouse. It's where your purpose is in this season. It may be breaking, baking meals or, or baking bread or taking fresh meals to a new neighbor or your neighbor. If you've got um, a, a blessing or a gifting for hospitality, that's something to do. And, and the list goes on and on and on. There is no complete list of what those possibilities are. My passion is coaching women to help them step up and recognize their gifts, talents, and abilities, and to learn how to move into using those. That is part of my purpose as a coach, is to empower other women. And it's something that I have passion for. It is something that I am actively doing. And it is where I want to invest my time and energy. And so that is, again, um, signposts or mileposts or indicators of where I'm supposed to be in life. So um, another example I wanted to share was my friend Dana, who was the editor for my book. She has a passion to help writers produce and publish high quality content. She's an excellent writing coach and editor, and she's a writer herself. Is it always easy? Nope, it's not. Is it always a passion? Deep down for her, yes, it is. But there's also mundane parts that are truly work, that four letter word. And so one of the last points here about your purpose is that oftentimes your purpose will find you. Again, we think we have to go on this hunt and it's, it's like that rare coin that's hidden under a rock somewhere. Not so much. If you open up and just ask for it to be brought to you, it will show up for you. If you're paying attention and you're open to it, your purpose will find you. And so again, as a life coach, I have tools to help people identify puzzle pieces to help you recognize the clues. Sometimes we can't see the forest for the trees and we just need someone else objective looking and going, well, what do you think about this? 
And so I do want to offer a free 30 minute coaching session to anyone who's listening in anywhere in the world. This is not restricted to the US. I have clients in other countries. If you are struggling to find your purpose and you just need some help or you need some ideas or clues where to start, I offer you a free 30 minute coaching session. And if that's something you're interested in, we'll go ahead and explore how to make it affordable and how to make that happen for you. Another day, we're gonna talk about your calling because your purpose and your calling are not necessarily the same thing, but we're gonna save that for another day. So there's just a couple of minutes left and I'm just gonna really quickly talk about self-belief. So for all of the situations we've touched on today, the forgiveness, the financial situation popping up, um, finding your purpose, all of those require that you have confidence in yourself and belief in yourself. Otherwise, they truly can take you out. And in America, in the way most of us were raised, we were not necessarily taught to be believing in ourselves. So believing in yourself is giving yourself the grace that you would give someone else. Believing in yourself is monitoring and catching the conversation and the banter in your head when you're beating yourself up and just saying, nope, nope, I believe in myself. I know that I have capability. I have potential and possibility. And that's where I'm going to invest my time and energy. Self-belief is also the confidence to step out and be yourself, regardless of what's going on around you. I know a lot of really powerful women who've been put in a box and the lid shut most of their lives, and they're not willing to do it anymore. And so it is owning up to who you are and not apologizing for it. If you're a big personality, you are made to be a big personality. It doesn't mean you run over the top of people but I don't want you to play small either. So we are just about out of time for today. And so I want to close with just a couple of thoughts. Um, one is a quote from the Dalai Lama. And he said, with the realization of one's own potential and self-confidence in one's ability, one can build a better world. And I think in the age that we live in, we all recognize that we need to build a better world. And so I would ask you the question, if you don't believe in yourself, how can you inspire others? And that is, again, a lot of our purpose in our friendships and our families is to inspire others. And then the last question is, how can you fulfill your dreams and reach your full potential if you don't believe in yourself? So that's the show for today. In two weeks from, from today on May 25th, my guest will be the amazing and powerful Mandy Keene, who is a world-class life coach who has taught me almost everything I know about authenticity and being authentic and how to gain that authenticity. So I hope you'll join me in two weeks. Thank you and everybody have a great day. Bye-bye. You've been listening to The Unshakable Living Show, supernaturally and divinely unshakable with Lisa Belts. Tune in twice a month for your well-deserved dose of positive energy and your personal reminder that you are perfectly imperfect and that's okay. Find your true calling and influence the world around you for the better with your profound gifts. Walk away feeling truly unshakable. Remember, God can't steer a parked car, so step on the gas now with Lisa and let him do the rest.